Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we are tackling a one that's been sitting on the back burner for a while. In fact, I'm going to pause that because that's driving me nuts sitting back there. But we did a first part of a video on 5th of March 2021. It's now three months later. The question was asked, which object types block optical, radar and IR slash EO sensors? And to save you time, this chart here is what we accumulated. It says that this column here, this type of sensor, will or will not be blocked by this type of object. So for instance, player visibility, player's eyes, will be blocked by terrain. So if a hostile goes behind a hill, we will not be able to see him. Uh, static objects. Static object is like a separate building that you can put in to the particular mission. So not one of these buildings that you see here, these are part of the map. And you can say if the baddie hides behind that static object, no, the human can't see him. Dynamic objects, things that move, ships, aeroplanes and stuff like that, no, the human can't see him. And the same for the AI. The AI also can't see us when we go behind these types of objects. And we proved that in this video here with various tests. Player radar cannot see a bad guy when it's behind terrain, map objects and static objects, but it can see an aircraft when it's behind a dynamic object. For instance, my player radar of, let's say that I'm this vehicle here, I'm this SA-15 or whatever the heck it is here, I will be able to see RC if RC is hiding behind, let's say, a ship that we've added into the mission because it's a dynamic object. So there's no kind of radar shadow modeled per se. So they get the idea of what we're looking at there. I presented that back to the chap who asked for this request. He said, that's great, but we didn't quite do what he asked for because to make testing easy, what we did is all of the human stuff, so the human visibility, the human radar, the human EOS, heat sensing, we did it using a ground vehicle. For instance, this is a ground vehicle and combined arms that I'm using. And I'm looking through this big building here and testing if I can see RC the other side. He said that us doing the sensing, we should be using aircraft. And of course, that makes perfect sense. Now, I just assumed that the same rules would apply if the player was driving a ground vehicle or if the player was driving an aircraft. Apparently, that's not right. So there is justification for going in and retesting, maybe not all, but some of this in an aircraft. I filled the first cells out, the obvious ones. If you're a player in an aircraft, can you see through terrain, map objects, static objects, and dynamic objects? No, obviously you can't. So we're going to kick off with player with airborne radar looking through terrain. Let's keep it super simple. I'm one side of Mount Idris. So RC is the other side. He's above it. So I'm going to be able to lock him with my radar. Then I'm going to ask him to dive down behind the radar and see that it breaks the lock. Of course, we all know this is modeled, but let's just prove it to you because we want to do thorough science. There you are. Right. Confirm that I have SCT'd you. Spike. Right. Now dive behind that mountain and I want to see that it breaks the lock. And we can look at timings and everything here, which will be interesting. You can. I. He's in the middle of the box, basically. He's in the middle of the box. And he's, he's now, he's gone now. Oh, spike. Yeah, and it's gone, right? Uh, I'm just going to unpause now. No yep. one thing. Um, it was about seven seconds. It tracked, carried on tracking him for seven seconds, even once he'd gone behind the hill. It's something I'm sure you've all noticed in DCS. And there could be several reasons for that. One, it could be that it's all modelled very correctly and very accurately and that the radar, once it loses the track because it's gone behind the hill, uh, guesses. It has its best guess and it carries on locking kind of in like a memory mode. And then eventually after X amount of seconds, it's given up of guessing where he might be and it just says, sorry, he's gone. And that's probably what it is. Or another option, it could be that the line of sight is not calculated on this very fine mesh that we have here. This is a big possibility I've actually been thinking about lately. It could be very likely that they use a, another mesh that's hidden from view. You can't see it uh, almost underneath this terrain mesh here. That is much more simple, has less polygons, has less, uh, less vertices, I guess is the thing to say. Uh, it's, it's simpler. And it uses that. It would be simpler because then it would have uh, less calculations to do, which is very important. Um, and therefore, you know, there's a difference between the fine mesh we see and the large mesh it might be using. There is one final thing, and it's probably not this, but 
what I know is that if you look over the horizon, then your eyes, what you're seeing is photons, yeah, coming into your eyes. Those photons always, or you know, as far as what matters here, always travel in a straight line. Therefore, you can't see over the horizon because those photons will not bend around the horizon, right? Simple as that. Yes, I know there are some exceptions, but that is the general rule in physics. Now, if I fire my radar, which is not using these photons uh, over uh, the horizon. Believe it or not, a radar will actually bend around the horizon, not massively, it won't go all the way around the world, but it will go around a few degrees. Hence why you can actually look over the, ra the horizon slightly with radar. Hence why ships will see other ships at a distance where they can't see them with their eyes because the, the beam will bend slightly around due to reasons that I couldn't possibly hope to understand. That's interesting. What if it's a kind of modelling of that where the radar um, beam energy has been slightly refracted around that um, uh, mountain and so it's picking him up um, uh, 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 when he's slightly around the mountain. Wouldn't that be interesting? So there's three possibilities there. Possibility one's probably true. Two is probably not, but it's interesting. Three is probably not, but it's interesting. Please let me know your thoughts. I will stop gabbing now and carry on. Second test, map objects. These are things that are on the map by default. They are treated differently to static objects, which are things that you can put down. It's obviously going to be the big building. Get my radar pumped up and sorted. There is RC. I'm going to lock RC. Tell me when you think I've achieved a lot. Can you get some more altitude, please? Uh, about 500 feet, I think, is going to be suitable. Well, Ignore the diamond. I thought the diamond did. Uh, he's in the box. He's in the middle of the box. He's there. I'm now going to move so that he's highlighted behind the tower. Are you still miles away from the tower? Uh, yeah. Always. All right. Okay. He is now behind it. Let's see if it retains lock. Interesting study this is. Yeah, I locked him. Um, he's just popped out the other side, so I'm just going to adjust slightly. Tower is pretty narrow. If there's any refraction, it would. Well, that's that's the interesting yep. thing. And here, okay, he's firmly behind that building. I'm firmly locking. Let's go right the way to the building, and let's see. Because there, if there is a slight refraction of that radar, then that will be kind of eliminated as we get closer, because the angle would have to get bigger. If this refraction theory is even real, I, I don't, I don't really know. You know, I know it goes around the uh, Earth's crust, if you like, a little bit. I don't know if it would refract around buildings and stuff. And I'm not going to pretend to to understand that. How close are you roughly? I'm about 10 miles. Uh, about 3 or 4 miles. If that. Yeah. So lock is in. the waypoint on the building? Yeah, I think it's it is. 4 miles. Yeah, 4 miles. I am 3 miles. And it's clearly seeing through. We'll go right up and smash our faces in it. So even if we were getting some sort of bending of the beam, there's no way it would do it now because you need, you need 10 degrees. 7 miles. Yeah, I'm 1 mile. I've now got my face up against this thing, basically. It's still got you perfectly locked. No, so that's it. We, wow. can, we can say, we can say that shadow radar shadowing, uh, from an aircraft's point of view, is not modelled on map objects. And there goes RC's body. Well, I came from the other side. Better not comment on that because I don't get demonetised. But that's interesting. Next, we are using a static object. This is a building or something like that that we can put in that does not move doesn't move you can't make it move but it is placed by us it will have slightly different rules in the way it works to dcs world are you ready rc as i see stt on right he is break uh right in the middle of that box so he's slightly above those buildings at the moment i'm going to put him down now until i'm happy that he is in those buildings to be honest i think he's behind those buildings right there i can't see his dot I can't see his dots. Just keep going anyway. We'll go all the way. What's your speed? 250. Right, we'll go all the way just to make sure. Heavens, we've got to be scientific about this. Uh, I'm a little ahead of you, but okay. that's fine. Here's the wires. I'm going to go over them. I think we can all agree there, value viewers, that he's definitely behind that building. And no amount of radiation really? is going to go through that much concrete. Not only behind the building, it's behind the little hill. Did actually lose you there, but oh, that's. I lost you. Yep, yeah, I lost you there. The hill. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I come up. It's, it's, a little, it's oh, just that hill. It was that hill. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that it, I was looking at you through that building most of the time. So I'm pretty sure it's not modelled the uh, blocking of that radiation. Right. Uh, next test. 
Same thing, valued viewers. It's a dynamic, movable ship now. And in fact, I can see I'll see it right there. Three, two, one, go. Right, there he is. Wow. He is above the ship at the moment, but I'm now going to move down. Am down, I? Down, 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 oh. down. Yes, you are. They are pretty low. Okay, he is now behind the ship. And let's see what happens to my radar track. Finally found a use for 2K. I can actually see you properly. You <laughs> just, I mean, he's well behind the ship, the valley. We're going to go plant our faces into it just to make sure, but he is well behind it. Always has been. Oh! Oh! Wow. Hit it. Anyway, uh, proof of concept <laughs> is not modeled there. Uh, There's no way you would have seen me. Next thing, valid oh, viewers. Oh is um, we're going to try the same test essentially but with an EO sensor, an electro optical sensor which is going to use heat. Just got to get a lock on him, see the flanker immediately, there, right, dive, dive, dive. Uh, yeah, down, 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 quick because I'm about to hit the thing. Yeah, go on up, down, up low. Right, there you go guys, and it, oh it worked, it worked, yep. Oh, it's terrain. We're expecting that, actually. Yeah. It, it, now, here's an interesting thing. I'm just going to pause here. Here's an interesting thing. Note with the IR, it broke as soon as he went over the terrain. When the radar, um, it took a few seconds. So that's probably, uh, like I said, the radar's guessing for a while where he's going. Whereas the EO just says, nah, don't know where he is. Unlock. Okay, very good. And we're on to map objects with the EO. Unpause now. Get everything ready. Right. If I've done my calculations right, RC should be behind the verge somewhere, so... Let me start locking, see what happens. Okay, there right he is. Now. There he is. Let's maneuver him behind there. You know what? You can lock me with your radar if you want, and that'll actually help you show where to go. Because what I'm doing is I'm kind of fighting against you at the moment. No, no, yeah, there you go. Okay, he's right in the middle of that burge now. Right in the middle. So his radar's going through it, and my EO's going through it. Funny. It's and I'm funny. way below. Like I'm, I'm below. I'm, I'm amongst a bunch of buildings. Yes, you are. Like I'm that low. So. Yes, you are. Right. Who's going to hit it first, Valley viewers? Who knows? This crazy town. Oh! Uh, oh, I got the right tone there. I think it's an E, D flat. Boom! You went out this side. I went out that side. Uh, lovely job. Uh, static object, Valley viewers, and go. Got him. Right. I'm going to dunk him under the, uh, dunk him under the building. You all know the rest by now. It doesn't look like it's modelled, but let's keep going. I'm a little bit high, that's my problem. Let's get down. There we go, he's right through that building now. Who's going to hit their face on that building first? That's what the Valley viewers want to know now. Bam. Bam! <laughs> well, at least we're getting some boom boom in. Watch me get demonetized for the friggin' violence now. EO on. Oh, hello. That's a bit bumpy. Got him right. Put him behind the carrier. Put him behind the carrier. Come on down, flank it down, 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 down. And he's behind the carrier. And I have an EO lock, retaining an EO lock. Let's get as close as we can to the carrier. Well, one of us is about to crash, I can tell you that. I'm going to crash in a second. <laughs> Boom! Oh, Simultaneous and carrier boom. crashing. That should be a new sport. Right, uh, not modeled, out we go. And welcome to everyone's favorite part of the video, the data set. There's nothing that gets me more horny than a good DCS data set. So this one here was from video one. This one here is from video two. What we can say is that human visibility, obviously everything is modeled, okay? Human radar while airborne, this is airborne stuff only. So we are in an aircraft and the guy I'm looking at is in an aircraft. Terrain does stop my radar. Map objects, static objects, dynamic objects don't stop my radar. It sees through them. EOS, exactly the same. Terrain, yes. The other three, no. In terms of AI aircraft, looking at us in aircraft, terrain will block their visibility. Terrain does block their radar. Terrain does block their EOS. Uh, we don't even need to do show on a video. I can tell you that right now from five years of experience. You know, you just break a lock by going under the terrain. These ones, the orange ones here, we just found a little bit too hard to test. It's very hard to get an AI to fly exactly where, you, do you know what I mean? When it's attacking you, the last thing he wants to do is fly like we were flying there. And to be honest, life is a bit too short. So we're going to put them as ambiguous slash well, no, I was going to say it doesn't matter. It does matter because you want to know whether you can hide from an AI behind a building or not. But 
you're going to have to figure that out yourselves, I'm afraid. Um, in terms of, is that good or bad? Uh, I mean, it's presumably not realistic. I don't see why a radar will shoot through a building or a ship, but that's just the way it's modelled. I mean, there's always give and take. So it's bad because we're pretty sure that's not realistic. However, it's good because there's a lot of processes that need, especially when it comes to dynamic objects, extra processes, line of sight checks that need to be done. So it will slow your game down. So I don't know how much by, you know, that's all way above my pay grade. But that's that there. I've got nothing else to add. RC, anything to add to that data set? Nope. I hope you enjoyed it and see you later.